Now, I'm going to show you some stories today that will change your lives. She went from 500 pounds to fabulous. I had absolutely no idea that I was that large. It's been totally life-changing for me. Whether you want to lose 10 pounds or 100, this is the show for you. Oh, my goodness. How they did it and how you can, too. Plus, the skinny on fat tricks. Can they help you lose weight by drinking them? Coming up next. We'll save lives today. You guys ready to get healthy? Yeah. I'm asking you a big question. Get comfortable. It's a really important question. Are you worth it? Because when it comes to your health and making changes in your life, it all boils down to that one simple question. Whether you want to be stronger, or lower your blood pressure, even lose weight, nothing I say matters until you decide that you're worth it. Now, I'm going to show you some stories today that will change your lives. But I want to hear from the audience first. Tell me stories about how you realized that you were worth it. Put your hands up. Who wants to talk about this? Here. Yeah. Go ahead. Started when my daughter went away to college, and when I got lonely, I would exercise, and I've continued because I'm worth it. You are worth it. Yeah. Someone else who thought they were worth it. Go ahead. Well, last year, after my father passed away from cancer, me and my mother decided to make a change. So we started to juice, eat clean and organic, exercise, and we lost 130 pounds together. Woo! And our cholesterol has gone way down. Take me back to what was it that made you realize that you deserved to be 130 pounds lighter together? I think that it, we deserve it because our life is too important. Our life is too important to make bad decisions and to make unhealthy choices that may decrease our lifespan on this beautiful earth. Oh, beautifully stated. Let me take you through. I'm going to get started on the show. It's why I love, love this program so much. Today you're going to meet courageous women who did just what you guys have done. They realized they were worth it. Each weighed over 500 pounds. They're here to show you how they lost half their weight and gained self-worth. Then there's a huge trend taking over social media. Flush drinks, claiming to eliminate toxins and fats from your body. But do they work and are they safe? And the best over-the-counter treatments to help with those pesky dark circles under your eyes. You guys excited about these? Yeah. Let's get to them. Here's a number I want you to think about. 946. That's how many pounds the amazing women you're about to meet have lost. And you're not going to believe their life-changing transformations. First, there's Jenny, 35 years old, stay-at-home mom from Idaho. Learned at an early age to comfort herself with food. When her weight peaked at 509 pounds, 509 pounds, her husband and her mother-in-law feared not just for her health, but for her life. Jenny is the love of my life. When I first met Jenny, she was probably about 350 pounds. It didn't bother me. Jenny was 19 and I was 20. We moved quick. We were married six months later. I knew that Jenny had issues with her weight and it was a sore spot. But did I make an issue of it? No. You go into relationships and having kids with certain expectations. Jenny's gonna be involved, playing with Jackie, getting on the floor with us. However, I took on almost all those roles. Jenny was so large at that time, over 400 pounds, that she was unable to do a lot of that. When I was younger, kids started making fun of my mom. It was really hard for me because I didn't want to be embarrassed about her. It made me mad and sad because I know what she's been through and if they knew what she was going through, then I don't know if they would do the same thing or not. I absolutely love my daughter-in-law. It was difficult to watch her struggle. At the time, I was attending Weight Watchers myself. The program was working, and it just felt so great. I thought, wouldn't this be great for her, for her young family? I did broach the subject and offered to pay. Jenny's reaction was not good. She took offense until she looked at a picture of herself holding our daughter. And as she looked at that picture, she began to cry, and that is what she calls her aha moment. At that time, Jenny was over 500 pounds. She got the sense that if she did not start losing weight, that we would lose her. 
Jenny got on the phone with my mom and accepted that offer. When I brought Jenny to her first meeting, she seemed scared. I don't think she really wanted to be there. But with my mom's support, she braved it. In her first week, Jenny lost 14 pounds and she was ecstatic. With each pound lost, Jenny was able to shed insecurities. One of Jenny's dreams was to ride a bike again. She had not ridden a bike since she was 13, and as she hit a major milestone of losing 250 pounds, I bought her a cruiser. And our first bike ride, she couldn't stop smiling. Her goal was to reach Wonderland, which is being in the 100s for body weight. And she finally hit it. Jenny has always been beautiful to me. I just look forward to that beauty coming out in so many more ways. Jenny, let's show everyone how amazing you look. Come on out. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's amazing. Well, the, the audience's excitement is, is well deserved. How much weight have you lost? 311 pounds. <laughs> Are you ever afraid of going back to that 509 pound picture we just saw? Absolutely not. You know, it's been totally life changing for me. In fact, I often say that I was a double a woman, but I was living half a life. And I, there's no way that I would ever go back to it. It's just been absolutely life changing for myself and my entire family. And you know what? For most people, if they're going to go from what seems like a big number, 509, a number, yeah. to a very little number where you are now, yes. you know, it seems a pretty daunting task. What was it like when you first started? What was the first week like? <laughs> the, well, as he said, I lost quite a bit the first week, but I honestly thought I was going to starve to death the first <laughs> week. My poor, I went from you know, six bowls of pasta to half a cup, a cup, and I didn't think I was going to be able to sustain myself on that, but I was able to, and eventually I cut my portions even more and I felt great. But that first week was amazing. You, you mentioned the role of emotion, that mm -hmm. you're an emotional eater, which so, so many of us are. Uh, what do you do for discomfort? You can't numb yourself with food anymore. No, I use a tool called anchoring. Um, so I have my before pants, I've got my, my picture on the fridge, I have a stone that says believe on it. I have different things that I use to keep myself centered, including my uh, before pictures. I'm so happy for you. It's amazing. You can stay with us. Okay. We're going to come back and talk about how you did it. All right, I have one more transformation for you, and it might be the most amazing one of all. Christina once weighed 708 pounds. There she is. She doesn't look very happy, but she has lost 535 pounds. And when we come back, she'll tell you how she did it. That's next. Next. A newlywed who had her whole life in front of her, but somehow managed to let her weight become her biggest obstacle. How she found the motivation to take back control and lose hundreds of pounds. You're a whole different person. Her story is next. Addicted to tanning? First time that I was in a tanning bed, it kind of gave me a high. It's like, wow, this is great. A wake-up call for all tanorexics. Your skin age is 10 years older. How to reverse years of sun damage and protect your skin this summer. Improve skin tone, brown spots, and makes your skin younger. Then, summer food finds you're gonna love. We've heard of beef jerky, but watermelon jerky is a new take on it. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. What could happen when you don't think you're worth it? Christina was a newlywed who had her whole life in front of her, but somehow managed to let her weight get to 708 pounds. How did this happen? And where did she get the will to take back control? Christina has lost an incredible 535 pounds. Come on out and show us. Goodness. Oh my goodness. You're a whole different person. Look at you. Do a little pirouette. You deserve it. Go <laughs> have a seat. That is one of the most stunning changes I have ever seen on this show. Thank you. 
Isn't that incredible? So what was the wake-up call? When did you finally realize you were worth it? Um, well, if I would stayed back in Memphis, I was going to die. And as soon as we moved to Houston, um, my sister found out she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it hit me like, there's going to be a new baby in the family. I can't even take care of myself. How am I going to be able to take care of a new baby? So, you know, when Dr. Nazarin said that he could help me, I was, I was on it. Like, I was going to prove everyone wrong, and I was just going to show everybody I can do this, and I was going to be there for that baby, and he is absolutely my world. Like, my biggest motivation, my drive to keep going. There, there are people who say having gastric bypass surgery is a cop-out, that you're running away from the problem, you ought to just do it yourself. That's a lie. Right. Gastric bypass is not the easy way out. It's, you know, it's not easy. There's complications. You have to take vitamins for the rest of your life. And it's, it's mental. You have to be willing to change your lifestyle. You know, you can't just mess up and then change it tomorrow. It's a big commitment. It is a huge commitment. I, I think gastric bypass surgery and those types of operations are the most underperformed operations in America. I'll be clear on this. And I see you and a smile on your face and a woman who's found her life again and you're a living testimony to that. You wanna help me explain to everybody what this operation is about? Sure. Come on over here. This is a very straightforward procedure, if you understand it. And there's seven ways you can go about it, but this is one of the most effective ones. The first thing the surgeon does, and they can do this with little scopes, right? That's how they did yours. Yes. So they don't have to open you all up, is they go into your stomach and know your swallowing tube is up here mm -hmm. and there's a the stomach hidden back there. So the surgeon's got to get in there with those little scopes, and what he does, or she does, is cut a little bit of the stomach off. Yep. You're locked into only a little bit of food, maybe two to four ounces in there. Look how much of the stomach. Most of the stomach isn't ever going to see food again. I'm going to say that again. Most of the stomach will never see or touch food again. And the intestines after it won't see food either, so they can't absorb stuff. The nutrients you don't get, you got to take the vitamins you mentioned, but you also don't absorb calories. The next thing the surgeon has to do is connect the swallowing tube in its little pouch of stomach to the rest of your body or else you can't eat anything. And so he or she will take a little loop of intestines, cut it, and bring this, swing it up, and tie it into that little pouch. Just like that. So the food comes through the swallowing tube, through the stomach, and then through the small intestines here. But notice the stomach and all the digesting fluids, they're not going back into the intestines. You've got to connect them back, which is easy to do. And this is what it looks like now. Unlike most people, when you eat food, it goes through your stomach, into the intestines, and down and bypasses all this. That's why it's called a gastric bypass. All this is being bypassed, never seeing food. You get the digestive juices going in there, but you're not going to get, be able to gain weight. Mm -hmm. Now, for the first time ever, I actually have specimens of someone who's had a gastric bypass. Are you interested in see what's going on inside your body? Yes. All right. I know this can be daunting to some. I, I've never shown it before because it's hard to find these, but... Go ahead, put your purple gloves on. Now remember I showed everybody how the swallowing tube takes the food down. This is the swallowing tube right here. And as the food goes from the esophagus, the swallowing tube, into the stomach, there's a stomach there. The surgeon will cut a little bit of the stomach off and separate them like this. So this big stomach, see how large that is? Yeah. All that space that food used to fill you up with, mm -hmm. you, you can't eat that food anymore. I know. Your stomach literally is this little piece right here. Wow. That little line is between the swallowing tube and stomach, and that little bit's your stomach left compared to this big piece that used to be there. Mm -hmm. Is that how you feel sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> it's not much less in there, huh? Uh-huh, definitely. So it limits how much you can eat, mm -hmm. and it also limits what happens after if you eat the wrong stuff. Yes. All right. So I want to find out how you did this, because you actually lost a lot of weight before you had this operation mm -hmm. in order to get ready for it. So if you'll stay with me, I want to bring Chris Powell into the conversation. He's one of my core experts. He has mentored some of the biggest weight losses we've ever seen on the show, and he's here today. Chris, come on out. He started cheering for you when I said Chris. I didn't get the Powell part. I love you guys. They love you too. So these charming women, so many have been able to figure out that they're worth it. Yes. What's the key to their success? Just amazing success stories. And you know what's really cool is that if you listen to the details of their stories, you hear these common denominators in there. It's almost like we can map the journey of transformation that, that anybody can do. Mm. Right off the bat, 
there was a point of inspiration where they were moved to make a difference in their life. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that, there was a point of education where it was that they pick up the phone to call their mom mm -hmm. or they did an internet search to think, okay, well, how am I gonna go about doing this? Mm -hmm. But then it went from, can I do it, to I'm going to do this, and they took that, that necessary first step. They put it into action. Mm -hmm. And for some people, that first step can be a walk around the block, cleaning mm -hmm. out your pantry, mm -hmm. you know, signing up at the gym with a trainer, whatever that first step is, but they put it into action. And then from there, this is the part that we haven't really gotten into quite yet, but then you'll, you'll also hear them talk about um, different goals that they set along the way and the rewards for those goals, because the reward isn't food anymore. It's like, hey, I'm gonna drop into the 300s, into the 200s. You, you hear them talk about Wonderland. Well, once they hit Wonderland, well, you, don't, you don't celebrate with the pizza. No, instead it's gonna be, I'm gonna buy that dress. I'm gonna get a bike. I'm gonna do these different things. So you hear all these, these common denominators where we can map the journey of transformation that everybody goes through. But, that's the chronological order, but something magical happens somewhere in there. And it's a period of awakening, almost like a, an enlightenment. And you'll hear them all talk about the point where they realize that they were 500 pounds or 400 pounds or 300 pounds for that matter, far beyond just liking food. They, they, they realize that there was an emotional connection to food and they traced it back to event or events yeah. in the past yeah. and what triggers it now. So once they started to, to create that awareness, that's when everything really started to change and it gave them a whole new sense of control. You think about this, imagine it being five or 600 pounds. Imagine being at that moment, looking up at the ceiling and wondering what are you gonna do? How does someone take that very first step? I get the rest of it. Once you started to prove to yourself, and we've heard this already, that I can do it, that's right. easy. But what about that first start, that yeah. first move? That, that first step, and it's, it's so daunting because most of us are stuck by analysis paralysis. You're looking at this Mount Everest and you're thinking, there's no way I'm gonna make it to the top. But as the proverb says, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with that single step. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, take, take Jenny for example, 509 pounds. She's not thinking of, 300 pounds or 200 pounds, which most people do. They're like, oh, I can't get to 250. I can't get into Wonderland. No, all she needs to think about is 508 pounds and then 507 pounds. I don't know one person, one human in history that ever jumped from 500 pounds to 250 yeah. pounds overnight. Yeah. No, every single person as you go through the journey of weight loss, it's one pound at a time. Yeah. And as long as you focus on that, sure enough, when you drop into the 400s, and then all of a sudden you pass through 350, and then all of a sudden, you know, you see 200, you know, you see a two on the, it's the very first number on that scale. It's these beautiful moments that you get to celebrate along the way. Yeah, I heard you any kind of wonderland, yeah. the 100s, <laughs> which is where a lot of women want to go and they can get there. Are you going to stick around, Chris? Absolutely. All right, and I know you're all wondering how these two lost such an incredible amount of weight. So I asked them to keep a food journal so we can help share their secrets. When we come back, you're gonna see exactly what they eat so you can eat just like them and get the same results. Be right back. Next. So how did these women lose almost 1,200 pounds combined? The ladies share their weight loss journal. Find out what food changes they made and what they are eating now. Plus, Chris Bauer shares motivational tools so you can lose the weight too. Next. Almost 1,000 pounds. Jenny and Christina are here to share their weight loss food journals. Also here, nutrition and weight loss expert. And a member of my core team, Chris Powell. He's from ABC's Extreme Weight Loss and a great friend of the show. All right, Jenny, take it away. Show us what you were eating that allowed you to lose all that weight. I really focused on three things. Portion control. I cut my portions probably, I've lessened them by four. And then- So it's so, so one quarter of what you used to yes, eat? Yes, yes. Right. And then I focus on high fiber which would fill me up. And then I focus on healthy fats, which should give me energy. So it seems so obvious, but I must say, and Chris, I'll challenge you with this, it's hard to eat one quarter of what you're eating right now. If we could do that, we would all do that and lose weight. So how do you actually do that portion control? Well, you know, the, the, first of all, especially when it comes to the program that Jenny was following, um, it's it really cool because instead of her just counting calories, instead she was counting points. So she almost gamified the aspect of eating food. Yeah. And so when it come, becomes a game, there's also a whole new sense of awareness there. And that is so empowering when it comes to taking control of your body. So that's what really created the whole portion control aspect. And it almost became fun. It, was, it became a challenge because she had to simply add up her points and stay within a certain amount. And at the same time, it also kind of steered her away from all those junk foods 
foods because the last thing you want to do is eat some junk food that's going to be 10 points and you're only allowed so exactly. much, right? Yes. You know exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. Is that true? Is, is, is eating one quarter of what you used to eat actually easier than you thought? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I feel full. I've trained for a triathlon and all kinds of stuff. Did my first triathlon and I had the energy to do it. You did a triathlon? I just did my first wow. triathlon. Right. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Christina, you all know she had the gastric bypass. But before you had it, and I mentioned this, but I'm going to be more specific. You, you were asked to lose a lot of weight. Like, I think they wanted to sort of test if you were serious about this because you, you were so big at the time. You lost 150 pounds plus. Mm -hmm. How'd you do that? Um, Dr. Nazar put me on a diet of uh, low fat, high protein, no carbs, no sugar, uh, no fast food, and I quit carbonated drinks or soda in 2009, so that wasn't a problem for me. Mm -hmm. um, I started eating healthy. So your specifics, are, you take out all that stuff, you're left with a breakfast that, is this pretty typical? Yes. Is this the right portion amount? So you have uh, yogurt about- Sometimes I can't finish all that's here because my, my pouch is pretty small. You don't even eat this much. I mean, sometimes I can, sometimes it's just, it varies by the day. I have a really picky pouch, so. That picky pouch? <laughs> that's what I call it, so. <laughs> so Chris, I mean, obviously this is hard to do, but the, the first 150 pounds, which I think everyone could probably learn from, yes. but it's also sort of like this. Well, absolutely, and, and that's, I want to give you kudos, huge kudos here, because by you losing the 154 pounds first, it prepared you mentally and emotionally for not just getting the gastric bypass and losing the weight then, but the maintenance. Because I've worked with a handful of people who have had gastric bypass, and guess what? They reversed it. You choose not to. You can choose to continue to eat and feel that discomfort, but at the same time, you can still, you can still push those calories into your body and you choose not to. So you went through that behavior modification. You changed emotionally. And, and what you've done here is simply you've reduced your portion sizes. I see a lot of protein. I see some, yeah. some healthy fats in there and very light carbohydrate, but this is perfect and it's working well for you. Chris, if folks at home to take away one thing, one thing from these incredible stories we've heard today, what would it be? It would be, you're worth it. Simple as that. You can do it and you're worth it. Take a look at these amazing women. They all have different stories that are totally relative to their journey of transformation, but they had the longest journey of anybody. And if they can do it, you can do it too. All right, we're gonna put all food journals on DrOz.com. When we come back, the latest trend in weight loss, drinking fat. What do you guys think, drinking fat? Could it work, does it work? And is it worth it? That's next. Next, from losing fat to drinking it, get the skinny and hydrating with the new fat drinks. Can they help you eat less? And are they really worth the money? Would you drink it again if you had it? Plus, one tip everyone can use to hydrate themselves. Next. Addicted to tanning? You feel happy, a tingling feeling. You get a little bit of a rush. A wake-up call for all tanorexics. Your skin age is 10 years older. How to reverse years of sun damage and protect your skin this summer. Then, summer food finds you're gonna love. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Today's conversation, the new Fat drinks, that's what they're called. Uh, remember last season I talked about putting butter in your coffee? Ever hear that? So it actually is pretty effective, I sort of like it. But there's some people who are taking that idea to the next level and they're selling these things that are called fat drinks. Now if you look at these fat drinks, they have these ingredients. They can help you lose weight by drinking them. But if you look more specifically, it's actually called MCT. That's what this anti-fat ingredient really is, MCT. Well, MCT oil is actually found in coconut oil coconut oil, so there are ways you can get it without drinking these things, but just specifically, coconut oil can fill you up, makes you feel like you get more energy, and it's pretty good for your heart, it turns out. But I gotta figure out if it's worth it. So I'm gonna ask you guys, since you sat close to me here, to taste this a little bit. You wanna help me pass that down a little bit, see what you guys think? I want honest opinions here, I'm gonna taste it myself as well, to see if the taste of these things passes mustard. Then we'll talk a little bit about whether they actually should be called fat drinks, and whether it makes sense. Hey, I'll drink from the bottle, you guys pass these out. There you go. Who wants, who's brave enough to taste this right now? We got more brave people here? Here you go. All right, so Lou, you guys ready? Yeah, Toast, give it a taste now. Mm. Mm. It feels a little uh, buttery. Yeah. Slimy, maybe is the word I'm looking for. Lip gloss, that's it, lip gloss. Would you drink it again if you had it? No. Thoughts? I would. I would. No? I would. no? Why not? Doesn't taste very well. Doesn't taste well. 
I would. You like it's that? It's not that sugary. Not that sugary. That's re- that's actually one of the big selling points. It doesn't have sugar, like you know, coconut juice does. That's one of the reasons that you know people argue it's better. What do you guys think about it? I like it. Yeah, I think it's a good way to get your healthy fats without eating too much calories. All right. So what if I told you it was three ninety five for one of these bottles? Does that change your opinion? No. You're okay with not that? If it's healthy. It's good not for if it's you. healthy. So that's the question. Is it healthy and is it worth the investment? I'm always conscious about the money part because I, I can give you lots of advice here. Some of it's unfortunately expensive. You can get the amount of fat MCT that you have in these in coconut oil, as I mentioned, and you only need one teaspoon of it. So a teaspoonful of coconut oil, which I'm not gonna force someone to take, is actually something that I do pretty regularly. And here's how I do it. You can take it straight up, which I would not do, or you can replace your morning butter with it, or drizzle it in your coffee, or just use it in your salad. You can just sort of put it on there lightly. It tastes, in that context, I think actually sometimes maybe even better than putting it in a water. That's a taste issue but I do know that it's only two cents a tablespoonful. So two cents a serving, to me, is a little better than 395. So that's just a cost issue. But let's talk about the medical stuff here, because you guys care about that stuff, and so do I. Is it worth it? So I've got this thing called the ozometer. What do you guys think I'm gonna say? Not sure? All right, well, the ozometer says, do not bother. I don't think it's worth spending your money on these things. They are low calorie. If you like the taste a lot, please enjoy them. But I wouldn't buy them for the medicinal benefit but I would take the coconut oil in other forms that we talked about before. All right, up next, another new trend that's got everybody talking, edible collagen. Have you heard of edible collagen? Hmm, huh. I like teaching you. Can you really swallow away your wrinkles? That's the promise. Find out next. Nice, you like that. Next, another fad that's all the rage. Can swallowing a pill or taking a shot actually diminish your wrinkles? It's the new craze that has everyone buzzing. I take it for skin, but I also take it for my joints. Edible collagen. Does it really work? Next. Whoever said a doctor's visit isn't fun has obviously never been to the Dr. Oz show. Is that right? <laughs> Make your appointment today. Go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up for free tickets. <laughs> talked about fat drinks and if they're worth your money, but there's another trend that's got everybody talking. It's edible collagen to reverse or diminish your wrinkles. Now they come in pill, powder, even a liquid form. In fact, women around the country have been having these collagen cocktail parties. No alcohol, just collagen cocktail parties and trading in their Cosmos martinis for a shot of collagen. So I'm gonna try one of these shots. Again, there's no alcohol, unfortunately, but that might make it better for somebody. Who wants to try some of these things? You up for it? Here, try this. If you have any wrinkles, you should grab some of this stuff. <laughs> That's the argument anyway. Go ahead, take and pass it around. Let's see what you guys think. Are you ready? Let's do it all together. Hmm. I have a discerning palate required for this. What do you guys think about that taste? It's not bad. It's fruity. Fruity? Yeah. You better t- than I thought? Better than you expected. Yeah. I was better than I expected, too. I didn't think I'd like it. I, you guys all sort of agree it's reasonable? So I'm curious about these things. They've become a big, big topic these days. So I brought in some ladies who have been drinking liquid collagen like you're doing right now for a while. All four of you have been doing that. I must say, you look wonderful. If you're gonna look that beautiful, maybe, we should, maybe it's worth it. How long have you been taking the collagen for? I've been doing it on and off for about eight months. Yeah, and I definitely notice when I'm consistent with it, I get a lot more compliments on my skin. My hair grows faster, my nails grow faster, so. Have you guys had any work done? I mean, you look really, really good. Yeah, no. I'm looking careful. <laughs> you feel the same thing getting worse? I'm going to just examine you while you talk. I'm looking for frown marks and. Well, that's what I started taking it to reduce wrinkles. So I just was coming up on a, a big birthday. So last year I started taking the pills. Mm-hmm. And um, pills I tend to forget. You know, I have a problem remembering it. So I switched over to a, a powder. And the powder is really nice because it goes in your drinks every morning. I take mm-hmm. a green shake every morning. And it's been reducing the wrinkles, though. How much are you paying for the collagen? I pay about $45 for a big canister, and I call it a girl's BFF, because for hair, skin, nails, it's awesome. You all, are you pretty happy with it? Um, so I actually tried the liquid collagen, and I took it for about a month, and as you can see, it turned back the clock 50 years. <laughs> just, <laughs> right. just a month. For but... 74, you look wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, but I actually didn't really like it. I, you didn't? I don't think it did much for me, and for the price point. All right, so as someone I trust a lot on these issues, Janine Downey, uh, and that's the question I'm gonna ask her, is eligible collagen worth it? She's a board-certified dermatologist. 
A lot of folks do not know what mm -hmm. edible collagen is. If you don't mind, explain what collagen in general does for us. And, and I'm curious about why you started taking this as an expert in the field. Okay, so collagen is a building block of our skin and it's the most abundant protein in the body. The best way to explain it is you think about a baby and you think about chubby cheeks that a yeah. baby has, that's collagen. And then as we get older, sun, stress, if we smoke, the collagen starts to sag. Okay, and that's how the collagen kind of gets beat up and depleted as we get jowls. older. Mm -hmm, exactly. So I take it for skin, but I also take it for my joints. And I agree with them that hair and nails are other additional benefits, well, a lot potentially. Of dermatologists, mm -hmm. physicians don't think it works. I mean, some have said it's like taking hair in a pill form if you're bald. Right. Right? It's, I mean, it doesn't quite go that way. So what I makes you that. believe that it's effective? I, I honestly, because it cushions your joints. It's really helped me with my knee. I mean, absolutely a bit with my skin, but it's not gonna just take your wrinkles and erase them from your face. It's, yeah. that's, that's not the case. So the lifestyle mm -hmm. issues are also important. Right. Right, but on right. top of that, you think it makes sense. Right. All right, so then this issue about whether you take it in this pill form that you have or the, the liquid form that's right. become popular, these, these shots that I gave everybody here. Okay, so the liquid form is a bit ridiculous, unfortunately, because the gastric acid inside our stomach is gonna just break apart all of the, you know, the protein bundles and you're not gonna go to the intended target site. So it's not gonna get to the skin, it's not gonna get to the joints, not at all, because the gastric acid is gonna just break it up. So when I hear a complicated answer, I think demonstration. Are you guys in for me? <laughs> I need your help, come on up, Judy. Okay. We built a little demonstration to Try to explain, this is not just for collagen, by the way. This is when you talk about pills versus liquid forms of any kind of medication or product, you should be thinking about this. So we're gonna do this together. Okay. All right, so we got two different people here. Two stomachs, two bodies. In this case, we use skin, but it could be the joints, it could be other parts of the body as well. And this right. is the theory about why collagen, uh, when you drink it or eat it, might right. make a difference. Okay. All right, so this is the collagen pill. Okay. My version of what you gave me. Okay, hey, All right. you, man, okay. you, yeah. Come here. Okay. Stand up. Hi, Hello. how are you? Would you help us? Sure. What's right. your name? Stephanie. Stephanie. Don't mess up, Stephanie. <laughs> Don't okay. mess up. That's the collagen pill, and now that's now the stomach. Now stir that stuff. Stir it, okay? Get the work. Stop fooling around, okay. Stephanie. Okay, come on, Stephanie. You said you were going to help All right. All right. just a minute ago. Now, stir, stir, stir. As she does that, you notice the stomach is now influenced by this little bit of blue here. That's actually the collagen. Think about blue as just collagen. Whenever you see blue in this demonstration, so that blue. So I'm not, there is a little bit of blue there. There's a little there. bit of blue. Keep stirring. Crush that little you blue Remember thing. science class? Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Give me this. Thing. Give me my own wand. I want my, I want my own wand. There. 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 You know what? Take another pill. <laughs> yeah, that'll make it better. There. Now we go. Now, now we, we go. go. There. There. there we go. All right. So, when you got the blue in there, you might have to take two pills to get the blue. Then what ends up happening is, go ahead and flick that, Janine. Okay. So now your stomach lets the fluid go through your body, and with that blue collagen containing with it, the theory is it'll make your skin begin to plump up. See how it's plumping up? Your skin, helps joints, whatever. Your joints, whatever. So this is the goal. Now, who's over here? You just come over here. Actually, both of you guys stand. You both. I need you both here. You'll stir. You'll be the stomach acid. Don't mess up. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is the liquid collagen. All right. You pour the liquid collagen in this stomach. Oh my goodness, lots of good stuff there. Go stir, get to work. All right, now, it, go ahead now to put stomach acid in. When you mix the stomach acid together with the pill, what ends up happening? It all goes away. I can pour more of this in there, it doesn't matter. I can't keep up with you. All right, that's fine. Nicely done, stomach. All right, now, now I don't have the blue anymore. And so when I try to pour this material through my body to get to my skin, I don't have the desired benefit anymore. I've got plump skin here, or joints or whatever. Here, I have nothing. I'm not getting the, the growth because I don't have the blue in there. So that's the fundamental difference between taking a liquid form versus a pill form. And it's one of the reasons that if you're gonna try this out, you might not wanna go with a liquid. It's one of the things we worry about all the time. Right. Are you convinced? What do you think? What did you learn from this experiment? I don't know yet. <laughs> not sure yet. They take a pill, it's faster and easier. Yeah. Right, the no. coating on is the pill safe? is what helps. And it helps. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. is it safe is the question. Very good question. So we do believe it's safe, but the question overall is, is it worth it? Even if it's safe, is it worth it or just a waste of money? So I must say, personally, I prefer you get all your beauty from foods. Right. Right? And your biggest raw materials are there. Things like soy, the leafy green vegetables, uh, avocados, all those nutrients that your skin actually normally wants. However, however, 
there are some preliminary studies, right. which is why experts like Dr. Downey believe this might make sense, that are showing some benefit. They're very small studies. They're often paid for by the companies that make the products. So right. I'm a little bit suspect of them. But the, so the bottom line is I am not yet convinced that edible collagen is worth it, but I do think we should keep an eye on it, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So the ozometer says it might work. I'll leave it in the middle. Are you, are you good with that? I like that, I'm comfortable. All right, thank you very much for your brave assistance today. You. We'll be right back. Next, when it comes to aging, no one is immune to bags under your eyes. A top dermatologist shares her best treatments to get rid of those dark circles. Find out how the color under your eye can also determine the best way to treat them. Next. Addicted to tanning? You feel happy, a tingling feeling. You get a little bit of a rush. A wake-up call for all tanorexics. Your skin age is 10 years older. How to reverse years of sun damage and protect your skin this summer. Then, summer food finds you're going to love. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. When it comes to aging, no one's immune to those pesky under eye bags. You probably have noticed mine. They've gotten deeper over the years. So I've invited top dermatologist Dr. Doris Day to share the best treatments for under eye circles. <laughs> the plan of attack starts by determining the color of your circles. Everyone at home, look in the mirror real quick. Everyone in the audience, you all have a mirror. Go ahead and put the mirrors up. So I'm going to start looking here. There I am. Oh, mine have gotten big. And you want me to put my chin down? Now you put your chin down and look at the lines under your eyes, mm. right, your lower eyelid, mm. and you want to see if it's more bluish reddish or if it's more brown, because that will give me a sign about what's causing the problem, and then we can decide how to fix it. All right, so you have a picture of what brown and bluish green look like, because I know everyone in the audience, the hypochondrics that they are. <laughs> there, okay, Z right there. So Doris says that there's a way you can fix this from the inside out. This is your home remedy that you use personally. Yes, this and is one I created. Everything's in your fridge. That's right, this, I love this because it's so accessible and inexpensive. You use green or white tea, or if you want, you can use both. Tea has antioxidants and caffeine, and these really help with brightening the skin, soothing, and rejuvenating. So this is, just brew a nice, strong pot of tea. Then you add in honey. Honey has antiseptic qualities, and it also gives a little bit of thickening, and it acts as a preservative, and it feels really good on the skin, so this is very, good for your skin. Then you put in aloe. This is real aloe, but you see yes. little chunks of it there? Mm -hmm. You have access, this is an aloe plant. You can break a plant, you can just buy aloe gel, and you just add it in. Again, give some the, thickening quality. Can you see the inside of that, everybody, how thick that is? Yeah. You can see why people have used it as a healing salve for so many for burns, and I'm finding out now under eye issues. Yeah. Okay. And it's also, it has anesthetic value. So if something itches, if you're not allergic, you put aloe on, it feels so much better. So once you brew this, you let it cool to room temperature, and then you add in cucumber slices. You wait till it cools because you don't want to cook the cucumber. So you just put in the cucumber slices once it's at room temperature, refrigerate four hours or overnight so it gets nice and cold. And we have some already refrigerated to show you. Once it's cold, you take the cucumber slices and you just put them over the eyes and what you get is all of those healing qualities. The cucumber Here. is a great delivery. Please, quickly. Close your eyes. Hurry up. There it's an go. emergency. How does that feel? Uh, it feels comfortable. I sleep yeah. like this though. Yeah. I can't really work. <laughs> they look Good. okay? I'm going to share great. this with the audience because there are other members of the audience who I think feel like me. How long do I keep it on? Just two minutes is all you need. You can even drink some of the tea while you put it on your eyes, listen to soft music, take deep breaths, and you really get soothed, soft, deep puffed, and, um, and more even in tone very quickly. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, when it comes to under eye circles, sometimes you need a quicker fix. Here to explain how to eliminate them in a day is plastic surgeon Dr. Frederick Barr. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. All right, so. We've seen the non-invasive. You actually yes. use filler in your practice. Quite a bit, I understand. Who's a good candidate? Who in the audience here, myself included, who you know, might be considering this or should be considering this? Well, anybody who really has those hollows that are under the eye that creates a kind of shadowing effect. So people come to me, patients say, listen, I feel really tired. Is that a patient of yours? That's a patient of ours, yeah. That's her. So she says she feels tired or she feels okay? Or she she feels good, but she's looking in the mirror, she sees that she's tired, and people are telling her she's tired, and she's thinking that she's aging, and she, her insides aren't matching the outsides. So what do you do? Explain how it works. So here's what we do. Basically, we go ahead and bring her in. We will go ahead and put some numbing cream on first, then we use some ice, 
and then taking the needle very slowly and carefully, we'll go ahead and inject she's into not those. Even grimacing. No, she's great, and and relatively painless procedure. I know you're talking to her the entire time. Talk therapy. Talking therapy is great. Just soothing her. It's about relaxing and getting the anxiety down, all that stuff. It really works for everything. I'm a real proponent of using as little anesthesia as possible. If I can do it under local, I do that. I do a lot of that in my office as well. And how long does it last? The lasting for this is probably between 12 and 18 months. Oh. Yeah. Under the eyes, it seems to last even a little bit longer for that particular product. All right. So you have all the options you want, everybody. So pick the one that you enjoy the most. Dr. Barth, thank you very, very much. Thank you. We'll that. be right back. Appreciate it. It's See It to Believe It month on Oz. Imagine giving birth one hour after finding out you're pregnant. What went through your mind? Plus, Wendy Williams takes a stand against the number one killer in women. So why is this a passion project? And the Hollywood couple who chose to be celibate. I was celibate 10 years. What do you do for 10 years? <laughs> you work out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming up Friday on Dr. Oz. Tomorrow you will be talking about Constance Tillett. She's 77 years old and decided, well, she was worth it. She started doing CrossFit. Really, it seems to be helping. She is beating up those trainers. I love it. Way to go, Constance. Very proud of you. <laughs> and for all the Constantillas out there, go out and make it happen. Go to my Facebook page to share this with your friends and family. Motivate them. Remember and remind them that you are worth it. Thanks for spending time with me today. Remember, health and happiness starts at home. I'll see you next time. Woo!